Hello, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. Behind me here is a brand new 2018 Airstream Interstate 3500 Extended Lounge. There's three floor plans for 2018. You have the Extended Lounge, which has uh, nine seat belts. They make a grand tour with a rear lounge sofa that has seven seat belts. And there's a grand tour twin with a total of two seat belts. The Airstrom retired the Onyx interior decor. So now your decor choices are white camel and you could get either black or tan seats they have a beechwood interior decor which is more of a caramel color cabinet that comes with the moon seats so it would be a little bit brighter white more more white seat than the tan that we're looking at or you could get black ultra leather they have the Colombian walnut which is a darker wood tone interior decor that comes with either the oil uh, the tan seats that we're looking at here or you could get the black and then they have the Tommy Bahama interior decor which is a very specific co-branded interior styling of the Airstream Interstate. I wanted to go over some of the model year improvements with you so you can un understand why there was a total of a $9,267 price increase between the model year well, $1,765 of that was because now the side screen, this uh, retractable screen, accordion style on the lounge extended, and it's a sliding screen door on the Grand Tour. This is standard now. And then the rear power screen, which was optional, is now standard. Also too, on the interior, there was an option for an extra seat. So standard, there would have been a shirt closet here, a half shirt closet that hung over this chair. Uh, there was an option to have that removed and have the extra seat, which almost every single customer did last year. So Airstream made that standard. So those three options are now standard, so that's the $1,765 of that price increase is for those options that people would have normally got. So the total price increase is $7,502. So what did the Airstream do besides make a few things standard? Well, they have these new awning end caps. And what they do is they provide a sleek integrated exterior design. So in the previous model year, The awning didn't look as integrated. Airstream also has new nickel finish cabinet knobs. So they were a chrome style previous model year, now it's a nickel style. Just a different look. It matches the extruded aluminum cabinet structure that everybody loves in the Airstream Interstate. Very durable, very uh, secure cabinet structure. Also, Airstream added vanity mirrors up front for driver and passenger. That was a very large request from Airstream Interstate owners. So Airstream did add that for the new model year. The new pillow design, so just something simple, but Airstream felt that it was necessary for this model year. New style pillows for the interior. They're very high-end. Uh, pillows and I'm sure you're going to use them throughout the life of the Airstream Interstate. One of the largest model year improvements is a new Suburban Nautilus IW60 LP tankless water heater. Uh, the system will monitor inlet temp, uh, the gallons per minute, and outlet temp. Eliminates uh, the exterior water heater door. Now you have this Suburban vent on the exterior so previous model year was gas, LP, and electric. This is just LP. 
it does take up a little bit of your storage in the back and another 14 or 15 inches but there's plenty still plenty of ample storage throughout the back here every year Airstream is improving their products and every year they take it up another notch another thing uh, that Airstream did was uh, multiplex wiring so what's great about this is there's many touchpad areas throughout the motorhome that allow you to control lighting and systems and there's a lot of advantages to doing a multiplex design multiplexing is ability for multiple electric messages be sent over a single pair of wires. So think about a motorhome, how much wires are run throughout the motorhome. If you can eliminate a lot of the wires by using a more advanced wiring system, it's going to be advantage to uh, the end user and the consumer. Actually saves weight too. You wouldn't, you would be surprised how much wires weigh if you use that much of a bulk of wires. Some RVs have over a mile wires throughout. But allows multiple electric loads to communicate through one pair of wires compared to having several wires to accomplish the same job. So you can imagine one light switch could use up to four wires to turn it on and off. Now that will communicate through two wires. So it's just a neater job of installation. So what you could do is you could turn your battery disconnect switch on and off. It's integrated into this. You can lock out your step. So right now the step is set that when you close the entry door, the step goes in. But if you're in and out every day, all day long, and you don't want to wait for that step to come out, you could actually just disable the step. And now when you close the door, the step stays out. But the system's designed, as soon as you start that ignition key, the engine, that step will automatically come in so you're not driving around with this step sticking out. But they do have a lockout for you. You could turn on the master light switch here. I'll turn on all the ceiling lights, the entire coach. If you didn't want to individually turn each one on, you could do it from the master. You could extend and retract the awning. This is a three arm support awning and it does not require the arms to be detached and buckled into the body. It also has a seismic sensor built into it, which prevents it from breaking if you get a heavy wind gust. It'll actually roll itself back in. But these three arm supports is exclusive to Airstream. Airstream worked with the awning manufacturer to design an awning specifically for the Airstream Interstate. The three arms prevents it from flapping up and down in a light breeze. It's more durable. But Airstream's awning being armless, that the arms actually don't detach. Most motorhomes, you have to buckle them into the body. That means you have to duck underneath them if you want to go by the awning. And it also means if you're trying to buckle it in and you get a little breeze, sometimes people slip with the buckles and they actually scratch the body. So that is eliminated by just offering a better awning altogether. And then you can just touch the button and let go, it will bring it in. There's your awning light. And you could. And then there's also under coach lighting. So at night, when you're parked at the campsite or if you're parked at a parking lot, you could illuminate the under carriage of the coach with these cool blue lights. It's another thing that Airstream thought of to enhance the owner's experience. You could turn on and off the bathroom light from here. The galley area, you could control those separate. The aisle lights on the floor. 
and then the main ceiling lights. There's a total of three solar panels. There's two 100 watt panels up front, and there's one in the back. Unfortunately, there'd be no room for expansion if you ever decided to do a satellite dish on the roof. You would have to remove one panel. But this system now gives you a total of 17.3 amps. So it's a good amount of solar gain. And then another uh, great addition is when we start the generator. The generator has a new resonator on it. Re greatly reduces noise level. Now you should be able to upfit a previous model here with the same resonator. In this cabinet there's more controls for the multiplex. You got your home screen here. It allows you to turn the lights, master lights on and off, retract and extend the awning. You can bring the rear screen up and down. From here there's another location you could do it too. So you got to hold that in. You could also monitor your fresh water, your gray waste, your black waste, and your propane. This is a brand new coach, so it was only shipped with enough propane to run a generator for testing, but you can see your fresh water tank level 0%. Gray waste is zero, that's your shower and sink waste. Black tank is zero, that's your toilet waste. And the propane is at 5%. There's a 12 volt tank heater underneath for your gray and black, I'm sorry, your gray and freshwater tanks. Black tank is actually in the body above the floor. So as long as it's in this box underneath the shower enclosure, as long as the interior cabin is heated, that tank will be protected. Underneath the 12 volt pads on the bottom of the tank, that gives you about a seven degree boost in the temperature of your freshwater and gray waste tank to uh, protect you for unexpected drops in temperatures. So if you're driving through the mountains, it gets below freezing, you don't have to panic and start draining water out, out in the shoulder of the highway. You could actually flip the tank heaters on. By no means is it meant for four season camping, it's just for unexpected drops in temperatures. You could turn the water heater on from here. You could turn your water pump on. Every time you turn a faucet on, it will sense a drop in pressure, kick the pump back on. As soon as you set the faucet off and the system pressurizes, the water pump will shut off completely. But it is recommended to shut the main switch off for the uh, water pump here on the panel. I wouldn't recommend driving around with the water pump on or water pressure on, uh, just for safety precaution. Again, you can start and stop the generator from here. And then you can see it has 1.2 hours on it. So there's an hour meter for maintenance. And you can monitor your house and your chassis batteries, that's your auxiliary batteries. There's two uh, absorbed glass mat batteries in parallel. They're both 12 volt batteries for your house. And then the chassis battery, there's an engine battery under the floor mat here. It comes up if you uh, ever needed to change the engine battery. You could also control all your blinds in here. So you could individually do each blind separate or you could just do all. So right now we're on day shades. You can see at the top, I could put the day shades down. Really shades inside, keeps the heat down, gives you a little bit of privacy. I could put those up. And then I could switch the panel over up top. You can see there's another tab for night shades. And I could do the same with the night. I could have all the night come down. And that really blackens out the interior and gives you a tremendous amount of privacy. There is a privacy screen for the front windshield and side area that completely blacks out this area to keep the heat down inside as well as give you privacy. And those are stored in this rear cabinet in that little bag. And see how this cabinet's all lit inside every time you open the door. It turns on and off the light for you. You got a lot of storage here on the side. It's really deep. You could put regular luggage up here. 
and it's all plywood with laminate there's no particle board and here's that extruded aluminum structure look at that lip there these cabinets are all bolted in place they're not held in by drywall screws or staples so it's a very quiet ride whether you have 10 miles on the coach or 50,000 miles on it the way the cabinets are made and put together they're going to stay tight for a really long time also on this panel I could switch it over to lighting we could do the same lighting that we controlled on this control panel we could also do up here as well then I could go to heating and cooling and uh, obviously in order to run the air conditioner or microwave you have to turn the generator on that produces electricity to run those items so what I could do is instead of flipping the screen I could start the generator from here and once that kicks in you're gonna hear the microwave turn on so you know now it's producing power once that transfer switch switches over and then I could control the air conditioning from here I could control the temperature right now it's 99 degrees in the coach I could set that down to 70 and I could also change you can see there it's ready to kick on once it does turned on a little bit too soon you can also control the force head air propane furnace system on board and you could change the temperature as well there's your furnace I'll show you the vent fan this is a fantastic fan it has a, a thermostatically controlled uh, fan blade multi-speed rain sensor that shuts the lid down if it uh, rains and first thing what we're going to do is our manual mode so I'm going to push the fan lid open the lid will open up all the way and now you just have a regular vent don't open the lid when you're driving I wouldn't recommend leaving that open when you're driving this is just for when you're parked or stationary it's on medium speed right now I could change that speed to low or high whatever you do here there's gonna be a delay until it actually communicates with the fan this is a quick release screen you can pop the screen off and clean it you get a lot of dust lint on it there's a fuse here just in case the fan blade got stuck it burns the fuse out before it burns the motor out and then the rain sensor is right above this sticker here that shuts the lid down when it rains I could put it on automatic mode and then I could change the temperature setting so I could have that fan run all day long until it gets down to 70 degrees right now you can see it's hundred degrees inside this coach so I could change that temperature up and down accordingly should be ready for the air conditioner now so let's uh, shut the lid down the fan when I put it on uh, cool I have my temperature set to 68 degrees we'll give that a moment to communicate with the air conditioner as you can see here the intakes on the bottom filters in the front you can shut the front off another filter here there's side vents to open there's an insta cool that dumps air straight down it's 13,500 BTU and then I could change it from auto so auto it's going to automatically run and change the fan speed and turn the fan on and off until you get to your desired temperature sometimes people want white noise all night long while they're sleeping so they might want to manually override it and put it on low or high there's an automatic mode which will use either the furnace or air conditioning to get you to the desired temperature so you set your temperature you go away for the day if it needs to turn the furnace on it will if it needs to turn the air conditioning on it will do that as well and you can manually put it on the furnace furnace is uh, propane it's a forced hot air it uses battery to spin the blower and it has a battery spark ignition that heats the room and heats all the plumbing behind this cabinet and we're not gonna be able to get that to come on today because I think the highest it goes is 90 degrees and it's already 100 degrees inside this coach 
The next setting is allows you to change the screen brightness and Fahrenheit Celsius. There's a little bit more uh, settings you could change in here. We'll go over that with you in an orientation class when you come to Colonial for your pickup. We're going to also go over the inverter system that converts 12 volt stored battery juice into electricity for a series of outlets behind the TV here on the floor, another one in the back. We're going to go over that with you. We'll also go over the solar display that shows your battery percentage remaining, your battery voltage, your solar charge amps over time based on how much you accumulated since the battery was uh, first connected, and your solar amp hours. Generator uh, will run 36 hours on one tank of propane. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot. We found out an average customer for every 10,000 miles they're putting on the coach, they're putting 10,000, sorry, 10 hours on the generator. So very low usage. There's a lot of occasions where uh, you really don't need to use the generator. Very comfortable ultra leather in the back here. Plenty of space behind the seat for storage for suitcases and gear. Then we can fold down the bed. The toggle switch is in the same location. And you could use this just the way it is and use it as like a U-shaped twin. So you'd sleep with your head here, feet at the bottom. Or you could actually jackknife these two pieces together here. One on this side and one on this side. And they fit nice and snug together. So what you want to do is lift up on the front, get them like that, and push down. A very large dead surface. Then you can also remove the headrests and there's a support that pulls out on the bottom here and you can flip down the side pieces here just to extend the bed. A lot of people uh, don't utilize that as often as they think they might because they might have cargo in the rear space that they don't want to unload. So this allows you to still have cargo in the back and still have a very large bed. It's almost a queen size bed. It's wider than a queen actually. By the TV, we have another multiplex system that would control very similar items to what's up front. Large storage compartment over the television. These have a Blu-ray player in the front cabinet behind the front television. There's rear speakers. They upgrade the front speakers in the cab area as well. There's a hanger for clothes on each side. Directional reading lights, the windows, crank out, now all the insect screens. So you got one here, another set of windows here as well, and then another bank of windows up front here. In the bathroom, a little towel bar in the back of the door. Mirror with magnification. This is all fiberglass enclosure. There's no seams at the bottom to maintain and caulk. A little bathroom fan up top. Push up, push the button in. LED lights throughout the coach. This opens up. You take these out. And load it up with conditioner, body wash, and shampoo at home. The faucet pulls out, hangs up, and that becomes your shower. It also retracts back in. There's also a toilet paper holder, which once you load it and close the door, becomes waterproof or water resistant. Toilet was upgraded last model year. It's a more of a residential style. Still has the foot flush. Push down partially to fill the bowl. Push down all the way to flush. Shower curtain pulls across the rail. When it comes to the end, the Velcro is in place. Protects your towel in the back of the door and prevents water from escaping into the hallway. There's also a retractable clothesline.
and once you get it across you can lock it in place. It's not meant for heavy towels, just for light items to dry them off. In the galley, two burner propane cooktop with a spark ignition. Sink we opened earlier. This is a microwave oven with a grill, so it has a electric grill feature up top. So you can brown food. Make sure you put the lock on before you tow it down the highway so that it doesn't slide out. There's a drawer down below, full extension. Gives you access if you remove the drawer to the water pump and winterization. They can be put a refrigerator with freezer up top. This is a compressor driven refrigerator, so they instantly notice how deep it is compared to an absorption refrigerator, like a propane electric refrigerator. It's actually more efficient too. It uses a very low amperage to run. And there's a lock on the top as well. The dial uh, to turn it on and off is on the inside if you reach back in. There's a drawer here above the refrigerator. It has the window sticker in it. So you can see here, MSRP with options. The options are just the air ride suspension, the VB air suspension, which is a very, very popular option. There's three different ways for suspension. You could either get two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or two wheel drive with rear air suspension. If you plan on having rear passengers for most of your trips, all the way in the back, I'd highly recommend going with the air ride suspension. It's gonna be a more pleasant, more comfortable ride for your passengers. They're gonna really enjoy that trip. And the paint is an option. So standard is the basic white commercial grade uh, Mercedes Sprinter paint. They do have a metallic silver, bright silver upgrade, which is $1,260. There's also black upgrade for the same price. So the total MSRP is $175,972 for this particular unit. There's another drawer here in the middle. And then this one flips down. So you put a sponge in there. Storage compartment over the chair. All four of these chairs swivel and they allow you to put this uh, table in place. So they're very easy to swivel. Just pull the handle here and it unlocks it. Pull it forward and spin it around. And then this chair here on the side See that lever here? That allows you to swivel this one. And this is the recline for that chair. There's also a headphone port that allows you to listen to the audio from the television without dis uh, disturbing the driver and passenger. The air suspension is automatic, but you can manually adjust ride height here. A little cup holder off to the side. Insulated floor, multi-layer, and this is a vi premium vinyl floor on top. And it's all pliable with laminate. There's no particle board, and this is a solid oak strip on the corner here. Solid oak on the corner here. So you don't have to worry about the laminate chipping on the corners if you bump into it. And then a lot of overhead roof locker storage. And all premium hardware. There's a spring tension to keep them down and a lift assist. And to neaten it up, just push the little handles in when you're done. This TV lifts up in the front to give you access to this compartment here for the TV switch box, the Blu-ray player, the antenna booster, uh, the connections if you decide to do a portable exterior satellite. And this side is where I have the table legs stored and there's even a light in this compartment you can turn on. It eliminates this compartment. Table leg just screws into the socket and the floor, and then to release it, you push on the button, 
get a firm grip and you can twist the table out. Airstream also has a lot of Mercedes-Benz best-in-class features. We have uh, side airbags, there's thorax airbags built into the seats. It has uh, Bi-Xeon headlights, Parktronic system with six front and four rear sensors, collision avoidance system, blind spot assist, lane keeping assist, and high beam assist. It's 188 horsepower, Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel, six cylinder chassis with 300 foot pound, 325 foot pounds of torque. It's about nine foot eight if you get the four wheel drive, add about four inches to your total height, and it's 24 foot, four and a half inches from bumper to bumper. Tilt and telescopic wheel, menu buttons, in the steering wheel, heated seats, heated windshield, beautiful fusion, navigation system with a separate backup camera up top. Gets 18 miles per gallon. I have a lot of customers that do report more. Plenty of leg room in the cab area. Seats are just back really far too, so if you're really tall, there's plenty of leg room there. And the seats are extremely comfortable. It's one of the compliments we get when people look at competing brands versus an Airstream Interstate. The way Airstream dresses up the seats, they do an excellent job for additional comfort. Well, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. Hope you like this video. Please like it, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. I'll see you soon. Please visit us on the web at www.colonialairstream.com. Telephone number is 800-265-9019.